This place was the beginning of the end for my family. Sadriz's Buzdari Oskostaur. A dragon is not a slave. Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with some juice to get you through the long night. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Sweet summer children, guess what? I'm sweet summer sick, so I may sound crazy. I'm actually not sweet summer sick. I got sweet summer allergies, but we let's get through this. So, Game of Thrones submitted the script from Season 7, Episode 7, The Dragon and the Wolf, to the Emmy submissions to be considered for a writing Emmy. And there were some pretty big spoilers in there for season eight. And it confirmed some things that some of us already knew and gave us some insight on some other things. So let's take a look at the script. And I'm going to start from Viserion. I was clowned for months and called stupid. People said that they unsubscribed because I said that Viserion is not a white, that he's a white walker. Well, right after the episode, I said there's no way that he is a white. He has to be a white walker because he was turned just like Craster's sons. And not like the whites at hard home. I also go hard and I doubled down on this a few times and went into huge detail in my video, A Dragon Is Not A Slave. So the script that Game of Thrones submitted to the Emmys confirmed what I've been saying and I feel validated, like not even gonna lie, at least I got one thing right. Just kidding. But it does feel good. So the script says, exterior east watch, north side of the wall. Hitting the wall with a blast of blue flame, Bran's meaningful birds take flight. A massive chunk of the wall breaks free ahead of Tormund. The ice dragon glides away, and we get our first clear look at him and the Night King on his back. He's done the same thing to Viserion that he did to Craster's sons. Only those were babies, and this is a dragon. So the script says the only difference between Craster's sons and Viserion is one was a baby and one was a dragon. So Viserion is not a white. A dragon is not a slave. So what does this mean for the future? We don't know much about the White Walkers, but the Whites are basically like mindless zombies or slaves. They have no free will or choice. They are like drones, but the White Walkers are more than that, more magical. Firstly, they aren't being warged or skin changed. They also aren't mindless, and they seem to have choice in the things that they do, and they also seem to be able to exhibit emotion, whereas Whites don't have emotion. They're just zombies. When John duels the White Walker and his sword doesn't break on contact the white walker is shocked that's emotion that's cognitive thought <laughs> That's not someone telling him what to think. That's not someone telling him to be shocked. So if this is indeed the case for Viserion, then Daenerys could take him back from the Night King, or at least try to. If not, then he would have to be killed by Dragonglass or Valerian Steel or Drogon ripping him to pieces. And the only way I see that happening is like the battle that happened above the God's Eye during the Dance of Dragons. It was a dragon versus dragon duel between Aemon One Eye and Vagar and Daemon and Caraxes. The dragons were locked together. Caraxes had his jaw locked around Vagar's neck, and the jaws locked even tighter as Vagar ripped off Caraxes' wing and clawed open her belly. Damon never fastened his riding saddle, so he leaped off of Caraxes and onto Vagar and shoved Dark Sister into Aemon's good eye, killing him. But they both died, both dragons and both riders, because a heartbeat after Dark Sister came out of the back of Aemon's head, they smacked the water and died on impact. 
Vagar's body was found years later with Aemon's corpse still chained to his riding saddle. Dark sister stuck in his skull. So I can see Viserion getting killed like this and even the Night King getting killed like this. We know history rhymes, but I would love for Daenerys to take back her son, her Viserion, because a dragon is not a slave. So the next spoiler in the script was that Beric and Tormund are still alive, which I had already thought. I'm sure some of you thought it too, because Tormund was too big of a character to kill off screen like that. So the script says this, exterior, east watch, top of the wall, day. Tormund, run, run. Tormund and Beric lead their wildling comrades to the stairs, carved in the ice. Eastwatch has a massive zigzag stairway, not an elevator like Castle Black. They run for their lives and disappear from view. So Tormund and Beric ran for their lives and made it out. There was also some light shed on the Tyrion and Cersei conversation. Listen to this. Tyrion, I am more sorry about the children than you could ever know. Cersei, I will not. Tyrion, I don't care. I love them. You know I did. You know it in your heart if there's anything left of it. She does know. She drinks. Cersei, it doesn't matter. Your love doesn't matter. Your feelings don't matter. I don't care why you did what you did. I only care what it cost us. It cost us our future. Tyrion, if there's no future, then why are we here? Why did you allow me to come? Cersei, not to help my enemies collaborate in my destruction. Yes. No, not what you hoped for, but you must have hoped for something. He is more right than he knows, she deflects. Firstly, she knows, she's thinking, and she knows that Tyrion loved her children. Secondly, when Tyrion says, you must have hoped for something, she's thinking he is more right than he knows. It also highlights that the conversation between Sansa and Littlefinger is basically showing that Sansa is in disbelief that Jon would want to marry Daenerys. Littlefinger says Jon is young and unmarried, Daenerys is young and unmarried. And it says Sansa stares at him in disbelief. So Sansa's not going to like it at all that Jon is in a relationship with Daenerys. Also, it addressed the look that Tyrion has when Daenerys and Jon are banging. The look is described like this. Interior, Danny's flagship, corridor, night. Tyrion watches Danny's closed door, looking troubled for more reasons than one. He turns away, enters his own cabin, and shuts the door behind him. More reasons than one. So there are multiple reasons that this hookup is troubling for Tyrion. What could that be? What could those reasons be? One reason could be just because it complicates things, but then what are the other reasons? Multiple reasons. That's kind of crazy right there. Another savage thing that occurred that I didn't even notice, but I saw it in the script. So I went back and checked and check this out. Yep. This occurs at the Dragon Pit. Kono and nine other Dothraki march with them, keeping a watchful eye. They wear the burnt, torn, bloodied coats of Lannister officers they murdered in episode 7, in episode 4. Bruh, the level of disrespect. It's like I show up in your backyard to make peace with the clothes on of the people of yours that I killed. Like, the Dothraki are just savages. But anyway, so what do you guys think about everything that the season 7, episode 7 script revealed? I would really like to see the season 7, episode 6 script but i'll link the entire script below so you can plow over it and see what i missed as always thanks for watching thanks to everyone that supports me on patreon if you like this video please give it a thumbs up please click that subscribe button hit that notification bell and join the sweet summer family okay my sweet summer children have a good day